Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything College Football Gambling Picks for week number 12. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. Let's listen to that sweet music. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about last week. I went four and five. I lost $184.89. Chris went five and four and won $1,047.73. That put him back in the green. He said he was getting healthy last week, and he was right. I'm not happy about some of those losses. Well, I mean, you lost the $50 games. Yeah, but the money doesn't even matter anymore. I'm trying to get to five hundred. dollars well, overall on the season, you were 28 and 38. Not good. But you have made 5.10 units. Oh, yeah, that's because I've been Cause you a went big. lot a couple of weeks. I am 35 and 54, 19 games under, or 19 bets under, because early on I bet money line and, right. the dog and whatever. So And I was betting parlays and whatever. So, But 35 and 54, I am down 29.53 units. We got to get right. And we about to bet a whole bunch of games because we both love the board this week. I do. I do. I told you last week I bet, I think, eight games, nine games, obviously, five and four. Yep. That's how math works. And uh, I never do that. And I didn't like doing it. But I couldn't find any games I wanted to cross off. This week I've got ten. Yeah. I can't find any games I wanted to cross off. Now, some of these, obviously, you're going to see how much I love them. And some of them, I'm not in love with them. But I I wanted some action on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, of course, you can find our gambling picks over on winningcureseverything.com over the website. Last week, John Carlson went 7-3 and three in the college football, or not college, well, just football picks contest over on the website. You can enter it as well. It's free to enter. You win free prizes, amazing prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. Uh, we'll talk more about them here in a second. But you go over to winningcureseverything.com. Click on the football picks contest page, enter in a name, an email, and then you pick multiple choice. And you're getting the opening line, so you're gonna have some value there. So yeah, go and check it out. John Carlson went seven and three, won the tiebreaker. He gets a, a pretty cool prize, and you can win one as well this week. Free to enter. Go check it out. Of course, over at winningcureseverything.com, you can get all of our videos, our podcasts, picks, previews, our social media platforms. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Help us out a little bit. Leave some comments. Tell us what picks you like, what you don't like this week. Tell us how to get off the slide because this is really a year-long thing now. I mean, we're, we're going into week 12. This is three months that this has been going on. So we need a little help. You tell us what to pick. You tell us what you're doing. We, uh, we would love to hear it. So uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have made several dollars off of Chris and myself this year, of course, and, and maybe a few other people as well, uh, although I feel like maybe I'm in a bigger rut than some people. But, uh, but yeah, Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They got incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and fire into this thing. I've got eight picks. You got, you got ten. Ten. We're doing eight. Team games. Well, no, it's, it's we got some that we like together. Probably. So I would bet there's some that we both like. There's some that we both like. So we we will have 18 wagers, but it may be like 15 games. Sure. So I'll uh, I'll let you start off. You go ahead and fire into this. All right. I'm gonna start with an, an American classic, and by American I mean the American Conference. <laughs> I'm going home to Temple. Okay. Hosting Tulane. This is going to be an incredible football game, by the way. So find a way to get your ESPN three, get your ESPN plus, get on. It's, it's ESPN U. Whatever. What is it? Is it on TV? That's on TV. Oh, that's TV. You don't have to download that. <laughs> Do I get that? Yeah, you you should get that oh, on Direct that, TV. That's yeah. awesome. That makes me even happier. You can tell how much I like technology. <laughs> um, Temple's home dog plus four and a half. Uh, no, 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 no. Plus six. Holy, has it jumped up that much? It's six. I'm looking at it right here. Oh, Across the board, six. Taking it. Love it even more. I'm changing it. <laughs> what, what's your dollar figure on it? 50 bucks. But I, I like Temple. I love Tulane. Tulane, this 
Get it, Fritz? Don't get mad at me now. But this Temple team plays tough at home. They are a different team at home. Bet them last week on the road. Yep. Um, did okay for me. And uh, I, I just – they're a different team at home. They're catching points. And, uh, and, and I think they're going to win this game outright. I like it. I like it. First game up for me is a Thursday night game. I'm going to Heinz Field, and I'm taking the North Carolina Tar Heels plus four and a half at Pittsburgh, and I'm putting big money on this one. $250 on North Carolina. North Carolina has won eight straight against Pittsburgh. They are seven and one against the spread. They have got Pittsburgh's number. North Carolina, they got to get some wins to get to a bowl game. This is a big, big spot. I understand it's on the road. I like Mac Brown in this coaching matchup. Uh, Pittsburgh is sitting at six and three. I think it might be a little, little shady there. It's it's not a, a full dominant six and three because they've won a whole bunch of games by one possession. Now they also lose games by one possession, but North Carolina has got their number. Give me the fight in Mac Browns here. I think they get it done. Uh, but I'm gonna take all four and a half of them points. Two hundred fifty bucks at minus one ten. Last week, the number four team in the country went into Minnesota and got got, got beat, dominated. From beginning to end, never led the football game. Penn State, they get to go home, they get Indiana. Listen, nobody, for some reason, respects Indiana, but I like Indiana. They send the seven and two. I think Indiana is a good football team. I think they are one of those teams that have progressively gotten better as the season has gotten longer. Hashtag nine win Indiana. Yeah. All in. They are plus 15. I thought when I was looking at lines, I was going to stay away from this game because I had a feeling it was going to be between 7 and 10. When I saw plus 15, I said, I'm taking it. I'm just taking Indiana. I'm taking the points, and we'll just see what we get. If Penn State goes in there and whips their butt at home, then then that's fine. But I'm taking Indiana plus 15, $50. I like it. I like it. I'm going to move. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> – I don't know what I'm doing with that. that sounds like me. Holy That's, mackerel. That was crazy. That is not a Gary thing to do. Good gracious. I'm moving to Friday. I'm taking Louisiana Tech on the road at Marshall. Now, what I'm going to do here is a little not what we normally do, right? Do whatever you want, man. The line is two and a half, and it looks like it's two and a half across the board. I'm going to go ahead and buy the half point. I'm going to do Louisiana Tech plus three at minus 120. And I'm going to put $100 on this. Okay. Louisiana Tech has been smoking people. Now, Marshall, good defensive team, plays well at home, et cetera, et cetera. Look, this is a Friday night spot. Louisiana Tech has been rolling. Only got one loss on the season. That was to Texas. They are... Smoking, folks. And I think it continues here. Louisiana Tech plus three at Marshall. If you get it at two and a half, buy the half point just to get you on that key number. I'm putting $100 on it, minus 120. Talked about Minnesota Penn State last week. Yep. Give me Minnesota this week. Going to Iowa. <laughs> it's going to be a tough place to play. Everybody's counting them out. Oh, listen, they only won that game. Everybody was all hyped up. Everybody was, was plus, super excited. Plus, plus three. three. Everybody's super excited. And now this is going to be a letdown spot. Man, you're not going on the road in the Big Ten and letting down. They're going to be coached up. PJ's going to have them ready to roll. They just, they just whip Penn State's butt. Yeah. They're going to go into Iowa, and they're going to give them hell. Now, they might not win this game. But I get plus three. That's just no, no respect at all. I think they are going to win this game. I can believe it. I think they're coming out undefeated again when this week is over with. Give me $50 on Minnesota. I like it. I like it. All right, let's move to Saturday. Saturday morning for me, 11 a.m., Michigan State travels to the big house. Michigan is a 13-and-a-half point favorite here. Now, some of the analytics like this more around like 12, right? I don't care. Michigan State is awful. I think after Illinois came back on them last week, I don't think that makes them want to fight more. I think this team is just about ready to quit. I think this is the... The D'Antonio retirement run. But I don't think they're playing for him here. I think Michigan smells blood in the water. I think that they hate this football team. And when they get a chance, 
to put a whooping on them, that's what they're going to do. Jim Harbaugh understands how these rivalry numbers have worked against him here lately. He's going to take advantage here. I like Michigan minus 13 and a half. I'm getting, I only have to give up less than two touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Yeah, give me that all day. I'm putting 150 bucks on Michigan minus 13 and a half here. Give me Michigan minus 13 and a half for 250. I like it. I like it. 250. And it makes me kind of want to go. I'm going big. Let me do 200. Okay. I'm going to do 200. All right. Yeah, as always, you can find the picks over on the website. You can keep up with everything that we've done over the last four seasons. Uh, and also, just so everybody knows, we've got TJ Reeves on at the end of the podcast today. So make sure you're listening on that. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Podcast hit, what, eight underdogs last week? I mean, just ridiculous. Ridiculous stuff. So make sure you listen to that Three Dog Thursday podcast. He'll be on with us at the end of the show as he is every single week. You want me to go again since uh, I've got more than you? Yeah, sure. Why not? Go right ahead. I haven't respected Utah at all all year, and I hear from Utah people. I'm going to hear from them again. Give me UCLA plus 21 and a half, $50. I, I know Utah's good, but wait, I think. Wait, 21 and a half? 21 and a half. I think it's just 21. Hold on. I'll tell you. Go ahead. You can look that up. I'll tell you. I, I think Chip Kelly is a really good coach. He's figuring things out. I know Utah has beaten the hell out of teams at home, but they think this is going to be the best team that they'll play at home because they played it the lower half of their season. You you can get 21 and a half at, at several different books. Let's so, say. Yeah, that's let's do it. Several places. So, anyway, that's all what right, I like. So, UCLA plus 21 and a half. How, what's, uh, what's 50 your dollar? Bucks. 50 bucks. All right. All right. I am doing the same thing. UCLA plus 21 and a half. This is for the Pac-12 South. Uh, yeah, we believe that. UCLA has been playing better. I understand that, that Utah has covered five straight. I understand that. They are whooping people ever since they got beat by USC. This is another California team. Chip Kelly against Kyle Whittingham. Like, I think they're both really good coaches. I do too. This is... You're talking about four scores. Yeah. That's just a lot. It's just that's, a lot of points. It doesn't ton. mean that they won't still win the game. It's yeah. just a lot of points. I'm taking UCLA plus 21.5 at $150. I like this one a lot. I like a lot of these a lot. I'm putting a lot of money on these. Uh, next one up for me. West Virginia at Kansas State. Now, I'm not putting as much on this one. But I think Kansas State is a insanely well-coached team. And I think that they are ahead in their process over what West Virginia is. Neil Brown has to remake that roster. And they have played some tight games here and there and whatnot, but they got smoked by Texas Tech last week. I don't think it gets any easier here. This is not an undisciplined team that they are playing. Kansas State is legit. They don't make mistakes. They don't beat themselves. West Virginia is not more talented than Kansas State. I'm taking Kansas State minus the 14 here for $75. Virginia Tech goes to Georgia Tech. Virginia Tech is a much better football team than everybody thought they were at the beginning of the season. Justin Fuente has completely uh, turned this program around. Revamped. He has gotten this ship righted, I believe. Georgia Tech is not a good football team yet. They they are going to take a while to rebuild and reload. I know this is on the road. Atlanta is not a tough place to play for Georgia Tech. And uh, I'm laying less than a touchdown. It's minus five and a half. Seventy-five dollars on Virginia Tech fighting Justin Fuentes. Seventy-five dollars. I, I I could I could get down with that. All right, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Saturday at two thirty, which was also the West Virginia Kansas State time. But uh, but this is on CBS on the Plains at Jordan Hare. I like Auburn. I like Auburn at home. Against Georgia, and I'm not sure if I should, but Auburn's coming off of a bye. They have covered four straight and eight of the last ten as a home underdog. They don't lose often at home as a home underdog. I mean, they don't lose often at home anyway. I was but say, they don't lose often at home very often. That's a tough place to play. 
last time Georgia went in there, they got beat down with a much better football team than they currently have constructed. Correct. Auburn is catching three points. Give me that all day. I think uh, I think new Gus is ready to unleash a little bit. I I don't know that Bo Nix has to throw a bunch. I think the biggest thing here is Georgia's center went out last week. Centers are a big deal for offensive line cohesiveness. And going against that Auburn defensive line, that's gonna be that's gonna be rough. those boys. Are, those yeah, boys are nasty. They they are gonna cause some problems. They are gonna cause some havoc. I like Auburn plus three. I think Auburn wins the football game. Your tie needs Auburn to win this game. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, yeah, you're probably y'all right. Need, y'all need Auburn to win out until y'all play. Yeah, that would that would be helpful. So that would be it would also help uh, Oregon too. So. Yeah. Uh, Give me $100 on that one. Auburn plus three at home. There's a big game in Texas. Game day is going to be in Waco. I was about to say, there's a couple big games in Texas, aren't there? For the, for, uh, not, not as big as this one. Good point. Yeah, the, my undefeated Baylor Bears. <laughs> Matt Rule. Going up against a little, little somebody named Lane, uh, Lincoln Riley. I yeah, that, I think that's his name. Kind, yeah. of a, kind of a good coach. Jalen Hurts. Kind of a good quarterback. CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. Decent wide receiver. He'll be okay one day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Oklahoma's a hell of a football team. They're really well coached. At the end of the game, not just the end of the game, the whole second half, Iowa State finally said, you know what? We're going to stop playing Big Ten for Big 12 football. We're going to hit them. We're going to hit them in the mouth. Oklahoma didn't like it. Oklahoma didn't like it at all. No, sir. And that's that's an Iowa State team that is a Big 12 football team. Baylor is not a Big 12 football team. Baylor's going to hit you in the mouth just because. That's what they do. As soon as Oklahoma started getting hit, they started turning the football over. Baylor likes taking the ball away. They'll take it from you on the ground. They'll take it from you in the air. They don't care. Your ball is their ball. I think this is going to be Oklahoma's toughest match all year. And I think they're going to get – the entire game, four quarters of hell. I think Oklahoma loses their second game of the year in Waco, but I get plus 10 to start the game. That is the most disrespect I have seen in a long, long time by a football team. Take $100 and put it on my guy, Matt Rule. I like the exact same thing here. I'm putting 200 on it. There you go. I think Baylor wins this football game. I think they've been saving up for three weeks for this football game. I think they understood that nothing else matters until we beat these guys. That's right. We can beat everybody else by a field goal. We can beat everybody else by a point. But if we beat Oklahoma, who is not playing well right now, who is starting to have problems with turnovers, can't stop anybody on defense, Baylor figured, all right, well, we can beat everybody else just playing vanilla. I think they're amped up for this one. I think game day coming to town. I think Matt Rule and those boys are going to be hitting, I mean, just wearing them out. TCU is a really good defensive school. Yeah. Coached by a hell of a defensive coach. Oklahoma ain't got that. Now, they got dudes, that. and they got dudes on the offensive side of the line. They don't have dudes on the defensive side of the line. Now you're, I you're can right. see Baylor treating this like an Army Navy game, and just we're just gonna hold the football. We're gonna keep Jalen's ass right over there, Lincoln. You gonna put your play sheet in your pocket, and we're just gonna hang on to the football for forty minutes. Yeah. Now you you one hundred percent right. You want to go again? You done? Uh, let's see. I've got one more. How many more you got? Three. You want me to go? Yeah, go right ahead. Speaking of Navy, they're playing Notre Dame. It's kind of a big game. Rivalry game. Yes, it is. They shouldn't be watching this one. I, I I always like this game. I think it's a lot of fun. I like it a lot more when Navy is competitive. I think Navy's very competitive right now. Like last week, I think Notre Dame has had their close games. And I think they've gotten beaten up by people, and I think they've gotten scared by people. And I think that is done. I think Brian Kelly has this thing right it. And I think from here on out for the rest of the season, he's just going to kick people's butt. It's less than 10 points. Give me Notre Dame, minus nine and a half, $75. All right, I can get down with that. I can get down with that. Minus nine and a half, huh? 
Last game for me, and then you got two more to wrap it up. Yes, sir. Louisiana Lafayette has been smoking people all year. Where he did this? By the hook? No. That was Louisiana Tech. Okay. Yeah. I think Louisiana said Tech. Lafayette at one point in time. Now, Louisiana Tech at Marshall, by the hook to three. Okay. Louisiana Tech plus three. This one, Louisiana Tech minus 27 and a half. Lafayette now. Yes. So, Louisiana at South Alabama. I think Billy Napier and that bunch are going to destroy South Alabama, even if it is in Mobile. Doesn't matter. This game could be played on the moon, and the same thing would happen. Louisiana's offense is unbelievable, and their defense is slowing everybody down. I love this team here. They should win this ball game by 40, and they're only having to give up 27 and a half. Less than four touchdowns? Like, give me a break here. I'm putting $150 on this one. Louisiana covers this one easy. Easy, easy. Right, I, I, I bet they run for 300 something, or 350 yards. That's a lot. It's, I, I'd almost guarantee it. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I know it is. All right. My next pick, we have one rule with gambling. What's our number one rule overall? Bet against bad teams. We bet against bad teams. I'm betting against a really bad football team. I'm taking a pretty damn good football team to do it with. Wisconsin's going to Nebraska. They're going to beat the hell out of them. I'm laying 14 and a half points. Give me $250. Nebraska is a trash football team. Minus, minus how many points? 14 and a half. You don't want to buy that hook? No. You're like, I'm not going to need it. They're going to beat the hell out of them. <laughs> hell out of them. They're going to run for 350 yards. They might run for 500 yards. Hey, you might be right. Is this defense. You might be right. You could run for 200 yards on them. And then my last bet. I'm going back to the well I went to last week, and I'm going to continue to do it from now until I see a line that scares me. Ohio State first half minus 31 and a half for $500 against Rutgers. Rutgers will not score. My my thought process last week when they played Maryland was how many possessions will Ohio State have the football in the first half because that's how many touchdowns they're going to have, and Maryland will score zero. The same will be said this week. Rutgers will score zero, and if Ohio State has the ball five times, they will score five times. If they have it six, they will score six. If they have it seven, they will score seven. You said 500? 500. Whew. 31 and a half points. 31 and a half first half at Rutgers. I like it. I like it. All right, that's going to wrap up our picks for this week, of course, you can go read and look at all the picks uh, rather than just listening to all of this over at winningcureseverything.com. Go to the gambling picks section, and you can find my picks and what I've done on the season, and you can find Chris's picks and what he has done on the season, along with our big game predictions for every single week. All of that will be on the website. Now, let's get into TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Every single week, we are joined by the man himself, the living legend, the Tampa trifling TJ Reeves. <laughs> How are you, But You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. You can also find the Three Dog Thursday podcast on Apple Podcast, all your favorite podcast apps. Make sure you go subscribe to that. TJ, talk to me, brother. How are you? Uh, this is a week to be on the Winning Cures Everything podcast because my man Gary Seegers contributed. I went three for three, and yes, our other did. handicapping guests came through with four more underdogs. That means that you got eight of them on last week's show on Three Dog Thursday. Nice call, my friend, on Western Kentucky against Arkansas. And Brother Giannini, I'm going to tell you right now, Gary Seegers and I joked on the podcast that Chad Morris might have been fired at halftime if they were losing. Maybe they should have fired him at halftime and they would have had a chance to come back in the second half. Nice call, Gary. Oh, nice absolutely. call on that one. I, I told you, that team was atrocious. And they had they quit. They absolutely quit on them. Wow. And, and I was trying to preach to you about Florida State going up to Boston and, and playing – in a, in a one-game scenario 
uh, maybe with some fire, maybe maybe w- with uh, some emotion over what had happened with Willie Taggart. Um, Kendall Bryles maybe turning the offense loose. Lo, lo and behold, you put the backup quarterback in as a running back and hand him the ball, and he takes off and goes 70 yards oh, yeah. for a touchdown, something they hadn't shown all year. So so the Knowles made me look good, and it, and it really makes me wonder right now what they're up to with the coaching search. Well, let's, let's talk um, about I, that. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. No. Uh, because I, I know there's some names that are out there, and Chris Giannini, you're, you're like backing the Deion Sanders play here for the Seminoles. I do. I, I I I don't I don't hate it. I like it, and uh, and I actually think it has a a pretty good shot at being right. I think I think he's going to be the guy. That's, I don't know. Now, you are connected. I am not. I am a guy that's just right. reading the tea leaves. <clears throat> and Dion's out here building a staff. Dion's out here calling other coordinators and and kind of trying to do an Ed Ordron thing of saying, "Hey, I don't have to be the highest paid guy on the team. I, I will be a CEO type of 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 you know." Uh, coach and I can recruit and I can get guys fired up and I can coach certain positions and uh, and and let my coordinators uh, come in and run things and let me just be the face of the program. Here's okay, so it sounds juicy and you lay out a good argument on ha- have guys that know what they're doing. The the first thing that has to be concerning to everybody is that I don't know that he fully understands. 52 weeks out of the year, this is all that you're doing. You're, you're not any longer in the television world where you're working about three or four days maximum in a week, and you've got three or four days to do what you want in between, go to the golf course, uh, go take trips, vacations, whatever you want to do. Uh, so the commitment from a time standpoint, the fact that he has never been a major college or NFL coach would, would concern me greatly uh, on this. And again, I'm somewhat connected. I think a, a lot of the belief is this is Dion's love for Florida State, and this is FSU trying to say to their alumni, we're being thorough, we're doing everything we can, we're turning over every rock and every option on who's the best guy. And so they're kind of going along with this. I mean, clearly Dion is interested, and and, and he has said so uh, on the record that he is interested in this, but I just don't know how realistic at the end of the day it is if you're going to get him as opposed to somebody like Bob Stoops, because from what I've been told, Bob Stoops was made a hefty offer and has not told Florida state. No, despite what you may be hearing or reading, it's kind of ambiguous right now. And so we'll see what, what FSU ends up doing, but they, they are still pursuing the former Oklahoma coach who is slated to coach in the XFL for Vince McMahon <laughs> next February as the coach and GM of the Dallas franchise. But we'll, we'll see if that ever actually happens. We'll see if Stoops wants the job or, or not. Um, I, I, will, I will tell you this too. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for Florida State to keep Odell Hagan in the position that he's in, let him be the coach maybe just for 2020. Maybe maybe offer to him, hey, we're going to try this for a year. There would maybe be a one- or two-year option uh, to keep him as the head coach. Let Kendall Bryle still be the offensive coordinator. Keep some continuity. Keep the recruits together. Uh, that's very important here in the short term. I don't think that's a crazy thing, guys. That's the because only, Odell, the only yeah, problem I have there. Is is yep. you give a coach a one year contract that kills your recruiting class? Yeah, everybody else around is well, going to say this ain't going to work. But I mean, th- this would be your the way you would position it. All right, Odell Higgins is not getting fired at the end of one year. They're, they're going to say to the fan base, to the alumni, we're going to try this, and if it doesn't work we then are going to go find the permanent coach and Odell is still going to be here holding the recruits together, uh, et cetera, because he's been there through Bobby Bowden, through Jimbo Fisher, 30 plus years as a player and as an assistant coach. And there are still financial concerns here. You got to pay Willie Taggart a bunch of money, not immediately. You're going to have to buy another coach out unless it's Stoops who doesn't have a buyout. If it's Mark Stoops, if it's Lane Kiffin, if it's somebody else, they got to buy a buyout and pay them the salary, it would be a more financially smart move to maybe try something like this for a year. 
And I, I don't know, uh, but, you know, again, if you start over with a new coach, and we're going to move on to other things. No, not, not everybody <laughs> on winning cares, cares about the Florida State job. But if you move on to another coach who comes in and wipes out the coordinators and wipes out 15 or 20 guys off the roster again, you could be bad again next year doing that even with a new coach. So uh, it's well, not it, the worst it thing in the world back, to maybe keep continuity. It, it yeah. could set you back years, so not just next back year. Where? Right, a couple years, two or three years. We'll see. We'll where? see what FSU does. Yeah, so we'll to see. To another four-year, four-win game season? That's, yep. a, that's a setting them back. It's where they are. Uh, agreed. I'm saying it sets you back further as far as it lasts longer. Yeah, but if you make a bad one-year hire, that sets you back just as far. Because now you've just delayed the inevitable. So. I'll, I'll tell you I this. Think, I think, I'll tell you this, this in closing. Okay. They they responded to him last week. Uh, he he did well as the interim coach two years ago. I, I, he is a commanding presence. He can recruit. He's in on all of their recruits right now, Chris. So I mean, I there there are bad options, and I would tell you if I thought this was a bad option. I don't know that it's a bad option if it comes to it. They may very well be able to pay the buyout, hire somebody, and uh, and get it done. We'll see. And I know you guys want to move on because Dion we we've got other over, stuff to talk be, about. He'd be unbelievable to stay on board. But if Bob, hey, let me tell you this, in response to one thing hey, that you said, I got I got one more for you. Dion and Odell Hagens were roommates at yeah, Florida State. There you go. When, when Odell Hagens was the hey, and and when Odell Hagens was the interim coach before the Independence Bowl two years ago, he had Dion come speak to the team right. pregame. So I mean, there's that part of it too. I totally understand, and I know you guys want to move on to other things. That's fine. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of the big games this weekend. Um, Georgia is going on the plains to Auburn, and they oh. are a three-point favorite. Auburn, a home dog. I'll uh, I'll give you a little a little nugget here, please. Auburn has covered four straight as a home underdog, and mm-hmm. they are eight and two against the spread as a home underdog in their last ten. It don't happen often, but when it does, they tend to show up. Gus Malzahn gets it done, and I like this game with Auburn off the bye week uh, here uh, against a Georgia team. Did I see this correctly? College football playoff selection committee put Georgia in at number four. They are aware that that's a South Carolina loss at home, right? I know that's, they that I know correct. they have a couple of wins, but they have them in at number four right now, subject to change. I, I really like this battle in the SEC. I mean, there are a bunch of different knockdown, drag out games down the stretch of the season, and uh, and this is a game where Georgia now realizes, hey, if we if we get this win on the road and we go on to win the SEC uh, East, we we are playing for a slot, obviously, in the college football playoff here with a victory over over likely LSU if that's the scenario. So this this will be a large one that we'll be talking about, obviously, in the SEC. Now. Another big national rivalry, Navy going to South Bend, going to play Notre Dame. Mm. Notre Dame, a nine-and-a-half-point favorite. This sound like it might be up your alley. Is this something you'll talk about? Could, could very Thursday? well be. What, uh, Brother Giannini, what did that open at? It opened at nine, and it stayed there, or what is the yeah, betting no, public? I mean, Thank you. It's nine-and-a-half, and, I mean, it's kind of even. I mean, it's early right now, so. There's but the betting, the, the betting public didn't bet it down uh, at the moment. Uh, Navy, obviously, the triple option we keep talking about on your show. Um, it, it, Malcolm Perry, the quarterback. And correct me if I'm wrong, Notre Dame was a 17-and-a-half point favorite on Virginia Tech, who I don't think is as good as Navy. And Virginia Tech was beating them the entire game. So this is a game that we, again, on Three Dog Thursday purposes, will take a strong look at for Navy hanging in with the Fighting Irish. Um, Ian Book, obviously a talented quarterback, but there's question marks about Notre Dame's defense. So, yes, it does not necessarily have any national title implications because Notre Dame already has the two losses, but uh, I'm taking a look here at uh, at maybe the middies, the midshipmen in South Bend. We'll see. So I just pulled up the, the most updated ranking information stuff on the game and it is at nine, and – the spread money, 78% is on Navy. It is going down. Interesting. Opened at 11. Oh, and again, sorry, it didn't open at 9.5. It opened at 11. It opened at 11. So it did go down a little bit. And the, the service academies are good uh, in this uh, in this scenario here. And, uh, and Navy, uh, with the Commander-in-Chief trophy in sight here, 
Uh, this is this that's a game to watch for three dog Thursday purposes. And I know uh, there's there's one more. Are the, are the Baylor Bears going to get any respect? Gary Seegers, Chris Giannini, that was the last guys, game. Are they going to get any respect here? That was the last game I wanted to bring up to you. Uh, before before we get out of here, of course, Baylor a ten point home underdog. Now, <laughs> I, I told Chris that I am of the belief that once Baylor got to like six and zero, seven and zero, they kind of just started looking ahead to this matchup. Like I, I think that the last couple of weeks, that's not who they wanted to play. They want to play Oklahoma, and right. I, I think they got a lot to prove here. I mean, this is a home game. They got college game day coming to town. We all understand yep. how big of a deal that is, it, especially for these smaller schools like this. Baylor gets no recognition. They get no respect. They're still they're sitting at number thirteen in the in the playoff rankings. Correct. And uh, and again, you can look at the out of conference strength of schedule as being part of that. They will certainly vault up if they get this win. And Oklahoma's defense is vulnerable, and we saw that in the Iowa State game last week where they're up big at halftime and then the defense just seemed to wear down even at home and and I I loved Matt Campbell going for the win there in the final minute try to win it forget about it on the road here about going to overtime and trying to outlast them uh so that that is a very interesting line at 10 I would have figured maybe Oklahoma by three something like that that is a total lack of respect for the Bears yeah I mean that's even a uh, touchdown but a a double digit Home yep. dog, an undefeated nine and zero home dog, like that's... and a heavily met, motivated Baylor team because this is the biggest game still remaining on their schedule. They got a couple more too uh, before I believe Texas too before they're done. But th- that's an interesting spot at home, and what an epic three overtimes with TCU last week to oh, keep yeah. the unbeaten season. That catch by the TCU player on fourth down in the first overtime, yes. leaping in the end zone, making like Chris Giannini in the day, leaping in the end zone, body <laughs> control, get the arm down before you're out of bounds. What a catch. And yet Baylor still overcame all of that and won in the third overtime. Uh, that uh, that was amazing. And we'll see if the Bears can take advantage at home with Oklahoma on Saturday. It's going to be a wild Saturday of college football for sure. Matt Rule has got those boys absolutely believing, and I would love to absolutely watch it on uh, on Saturday night. All right, he is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. You can find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. And, of course, you can get Three Dog Thursday at whatever your favorite podcast app is. Go leave him a review. Tell him Winning Cures Everything sent you. TJ, we love you, buddy. Thank you for uh, for hopping in here. Always love hopping on the show. Chris Giannini is going to be with me. He is raring to go with some underdog picks. He's looking to redeem himself from last time on the show. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. You guys be well. <laughs> Absolutely. You too, brother. Take care. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in here. He's always a good time. Always a fun listen. Go and check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You, of course, can find TJ on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. He, uh, he is very gracious with his time for hopping on with us. And, of course, Chris will be on with him this week, so make sure you go listen to this week's podcast. That's going to wrap up College Football Week number 12 gambling picks. Make sure you go over to winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over there. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Leave some comments. Tell us what your picks are this week. We want to know what you're doing. Help us get out of the slide, man. Chris don't need any help anymore. He doesn't found somebody to hitch his wagon to, and that is betting against bad teams or betting on Ohio State. I'm a little iffy on it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure that you're uh, subscribed on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Leave a five-star review for us, written review, on Apple Podcasts. We would really, really appreciate it. You leave something entertaining, something funny, we will read it on the show That does it. Anything else we need to hit? I think that's it. We'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.